Hey everyone, Zarek here from Laugh. got another video for you guys today. Today I got this A2179. It's the rose gold, not pink, version of this model. And it's in here for data recovery. And the customer was actually, they went to uh, McDonald's and they were drinking one of the iced coffees there and they spilled all over the keyboard. And then it didn't turn on. Could you imagine that, right? When you're just in the middle of doing something, you're trying to take a nice break, trying to go right before maybe work or something, get something done. Then you're trying to relax and you knock something over and it damages and ruins your day. Well, that's what we're here to help today. Um, we're going to be mainly doing recovery for the data because the customer um, wants to upgrade to one of the Apple Silicon models, which is a cool thing. You know, it's getting a little bit older now, but even though these ones are still pretty nice, we do recommend still doing fixes for them for the most part, unless you have a lot of damage. This one will also need keyboard replacement because the keys are very, very, very sticky. They won't feel the same for it. Um, even if we offer like a Palmer's replacement or if we clean with ultrasonic cleaner, it's still an extra thing to do, but they just want to move on and recover the data so they can get one of those Apple Silicon laptops. Or do you guys still have Intel based ones or are you guys interested in upgrading? So when you have a repair and especially there has been a lot, a lot of liquid damage and you can tell right off the bat, especially in the diagnostic phase that there's a lot of corrosion everywhere and not only did it impact the logic board, it impacted the keyboard and then it impacted the battery and then it impacted the screen and then it impacted, oh, their mind is like, oh, it's too much. Everything's going on, right? So they just want to do an upgrade, especially if it's a little bit older one and they think that might be something that's meant for them. But they need to have their data. So let's get right into it. Let's actually see what the problem is. We obviously know it's a liquid spill, but that doesn't necessarily mean um, that it's not going to be workable, usable, turns on, stuff like that, right? We know it's a sticky keyboard, which could also be shorting the thing out too, and we want to avoid that as much as possible. So let's go ahead and pop it open. Oh, it's a nice, satisfying pop. But we do open up, and what do we see? We see that we have a MacBook, right? And do we see any obvious corrosion? We see some stains everywhere. It's getting a little bit dark out, so I think the best thing would be to go in the overhead light so you guys can see that instead of me being right in the light. It's beautiful. All right, so we have this, and let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got. Do we see any type of liquid damage to it? We obviously see a little bit of stains here and there for it, um, and since that might be causing the problem, especially that there was damage to the keyboard, I think, um, especially if you see this is a little board that connects to the trackpad, to the keyboard, back to the main board, right? Usually when you have a problem here, you have a problem everywhere. So um, and it causes it to short or something. So let's go ahead and just uh, take it. Let's remove this connection, just see the reaction of it because we don't want to plug it in when we know there's probably liquid on the keyboard, right? It's, I mean, you can still check because we have a USB-C tester. We can at least see what's going on. So let's disconnect it. All right, so let's plug it in. Let's see what we get here. So this is our USB-C tester. It's going to tell us what's going on with it. So we got about, what, 20 volts. Okay, about 0 0.07, 0 0.08. And then what? Nothing. So and it keeps going down. It keeps going up. Do we get the same on both ports? Probably. Usually when you get 20 volts, that usually means the USB-C. Um, connection is okay, right? And the whole circuit's probably okay too. Looks like this area is getting a little bit warm. Do we see anything else? Do we have anything else over there? No, but this area is getting a little bit warm under there. But we've got 20 volts, about 0.01 amps. Um, we've shown other videos too. This is since you have a separate IO board, separate IO up there, especially if there's a little stain here, maybe there's a little bit of liquid damage that's underneath there. Go ahead, pop up the board, and then let's go ahead and check it out and see what's going on. looks pretty good. You don't really see corrosion on this side. And we also see here that this protector most likely helped protect it as well, right? So we don't see anything obvious there. Let's just take a look at the ports. Let's see. So it looks very, very clean. Don't see anything. Ports look good. It's healthy. Right? Let's go ahead and check uh, this side over here. Let's see, because we do see a little bit of a stain right that's over here doesn't look too good maybe there's a little corrosion there you see here it looks like that there may be some type of burn right on this side look at that you can see it's burned we're going to go ahead and lift it up we'll take a look at it a little bit further and we'll also look at the cable we'll go into the microscope to take a quick look and see so we're on this side and we see look at this area that's where your touch ID is. It's so impacted that it's pretty hard to actually push down on this button here. We'll lift this up and, and it's nasty there. We'll also clean that up as well. So this is where the touch ID goes. Look, man, looks like the liquid just hit perfectly inside there, right? 
and made it all very, very sticky. It makes sense, that's why the rest of the keyboard's damaged, but this is where your power button is, AKA your Touch ID as well. And you'll see a little metal dot in the middle, that's where the, the little bump is pressed, and that's how you get that haptic feel back when, you, um, when, it, when the button pushes back against it. So what we can do is, you know, again, we're mainly just doing recovery for this, but we can probably just do a little bit of a cleaning here. want to clean this up a little bit, just this area. So it looks a little bit nicer. And you can get that nice uh, haptic again. Okay, so before we go any deeper, let's just check out the board real quick. And we'll make sure that the board looks to be healthy seems to actually be pretty good for the most part. You have little stains here and there, which is good. I mean, the heat sink <laughs> is doing a, a job. It's shielding as well as um, doing what it's supposed to. It's a little bit, it's a slight corrosion here. It doesn't look too bad, but it is there a little bit. One of those caps is a bit burnt there at the end. These could all be a part of a circuit, so maybe they are all redundant. That's why you have a bunch of them there. So maybe we could just remove one and be okay. Or we could just do a replacement for that as well. So we could do either one for it. But let's we'll get back to that because we'll remember that. Let's just take a look at the rest. But the little down here. We we'll also do like we could probably do like a little bit of a flow down here too. We we'll clean that up. So we are pretty close to where the battery connection is, and you can see it just has a little bit of um, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to be careful just soldering around here because you don't want to leave this melted or burnt. So we can put some captain tape there, but it looks to be pretty good for the most part. Don't see anything crazy obvious outside of that. And of course the IO board. So, so let's go ahead and take a look at a board view just to see about that last one there. Uh, we check it. We got the board view here. And if we take a look, so we see one of the points right is ground. And usually on that side of where the ground is, you're not going to see any type of burn mark whatsoever. Why? Because it's ground, right? And um, we can see that on each side. And where the burn is, it's on the PVV out S0 uh, LCD backlight. So that's a backlight circuit. But if we go to each one of these, we can tell um, they are all, all pretty much basic on the same line. It looks like they're connected here. So since we're doing more of a data recovery and we don't really care too much about redundancy on these ones as far as doing for, for power failures and stuff like that, um, we're just gonna go ahead and just remove it because that should be enough for, so it doesn't affect this whole line. You see that? Because they all pretty much do the same thing. They're going through the same thing. So this most likely just has a thing with the circuit, at least these two. Um, looks like this one does too. So this, even though it's a slightly different shape on at least the board, but it looks about the same, but these all seem to be going to the same direction there, right? And plus this is for the LCD backlight. So this is a little bit different circuit. It shouldn't be a main power rail circuit, so it shouldn't really impact it turning on, but it could impact um, the backlight of it not powering on because it's a backlight circuit. So maybe if we powered it on now because it's burnt, you might not see a backlight because just this one. But if we remove that, that should at least take care of it. And then um, we'll take a look at the, the rest of the stuff uh, right after that. So we did live up the processor heatsink, and we did see that there was actually damaged area uh, pretty close to where this damage was. So we're going to go ahead also just do pretty much like an overflow of it there and make sure it, it's good because it doesn't look to be burnt. It just looks like a little bit of liquid got touched to the side there.
we take a look here, this is probably what's going to cause your problem is you have a severe burn to this main area over here. And this is the secondary IO board. So this one does have where the headphone jack is, right? And it also does have, um, this connection is where the, the touch ID is too, and with the, for the power button. So for that, um, if that's connected, that's your power button circuit, that would make sense. It's like imagine holding the power button down while trying to turn something on at the same time, or just having it plugged in. It's not gonna turn on, right? Or at least power cycle or do something else like that. So for these, we can just do a replacement because we see there's burn to the main um, pins there. It looks like it's pretty bad on this side, especially. It's very heavily corroded, but it's melted. When it's melted, then you most likely have to draw redraw traces there um, and impact it that way. But since this is just a board, we don't have to worry about that. Um, and we're, again, we're just doing mainly a data recovery for that. So especially if the keyboard's bad, we don't have to worry about other stuff as far as, far as, far as functionality goes. But let's take a look at this. This one's also where the touch ID is. You can see it's nasty. This is from it. So this is your touch ID button. So this little, the little black uh, dot in the middle is where you're gonna, it's like an actual button itself. So it will flex when you push it down on it. And uh, we saw that the metal piece looked to be okay. But watch, if you push, you ever see that? That's an actual button press there. And that looks fine. We can just kind of clean this up because um, touch ID, especially with boards and stuff, it's important really to have a touch ID working. This will have some nastiness all over it. Simp a little bit more there. We also see there's a little bit here. The touch ID um, looks to be actually okay too. It looks to be pretty healthy for the most part. It's a little bit shy. We'll take it off. Okay, looks pretty good there, right? And then we also have a burn over here. And that's on the, the cable to the, the separate I.O. board, which um, does get burned, especially if, there's, if it gets touched with liquid. Thank goodness this is just I mean I.O. board. So um, again, this is stuff you can just easily replace as far as a fix goes. All right, so we've got it plugged in. So let's go ahead and try it out. Let's go ahead and get our USB-C tester. Let's plug it in. Looks like there's like a anti-reflective or something. So we're getting 20 volts, 0 0.28, 0 0.25, 0 0.5. Looks like it's turning on. It's one amp. Get the fan spin over here. And we got a backlight too. Oh, and this is a little very bright. Cool, so it looks like the backlight, backlight works. And um, yeah, so the one, the one cap was just redundant one across there. So again, we're just gonna be worried mainly about getting the data off. Let's see, we got the trackpad working. If you guys can see, I'm gonna put it towards the sky. Yep. All raise up towards the sky. All right. So that looks to be okay. You can see it's up there. There's a trackpad, but the keyboard is not working. So you see that. So most likely because it's really, really sticky, we need to do a replace on the keyboard. But we're not here for um, mainly doing a repair. We're mainly here for doing a data recovery. On some models, though, um, to to even put in an external keyboard, you actually have to log in first, and yeah, it's exactly what you think. <laughs> so there could be a problem with that. Um, so what we're gonna do is we can just get, uh, looks like, I'm um, not even know the palm rest, we're gonna go ahead and make sure we recover the data. This is one of those great examples of a data recovery for me, I'm interested in just getting the data off, especially if there's a liquid spill that's really bad that may have impacted the LCD, or in this case, looks like the keyboard, the palm rest is really sticky, got impacted, um, especially if there was an issue with touch ID or the power button, multiple other things, multiple other faults, and especially if you're looking at not getting the Apple Silicon one anyway, that's definitely one thing. We are lucky, uh, at least on this model, there wasn't any impact to main the T2 chip, which can compromise the firmware of it and make it more difficult in case we have to flash the firmware for it, you have to work mainly on, um, if there is an issue with the firmware, if it needs to be reset, that does, in most cases, if you do a restore, it does kind of wipe the data and stuff like that there, so we need to work with it a little bit different ways to get the data off if that was mainly the case, but this one was more just a clear liquid spill Thank goodness it didn't impact the T2 and stuff like that. So we're able to get the data with no other type of issues for it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please leave a like. It really does help us a lot. We're in the Northern Virginia area outside of um, our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. We do mail-in repairs. We have all the contact information for that. If you guys are interested in data recovery or just fixes for MacBooks, we do that. And also other type of hard drives, data recovery, because we have a lab here. We do a clean room. We do all the head replacements, and we have all the tools to work on that stuff. So I hope you guys are watching. Thanks a lot. Take care, guys. Bye.